You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. Thank you for joining us today for this episode 962. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for sending in questions. That's what this is all about, is making sure that you're getting your questions answered to the best of our ability. So thank you for participating in that process. We do appreciate it. As always, we do appreciate the questions. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. And as we talk about today's question concerning... Um, how to get airspace approvals in areas where Lank is not available. Uh, there is good news. Uh, we do have a new video on how to get Lank approval through Kitty Hawk and using Skyward. Um, in addition, we have a whole new video on getting a WAS authorization for airports that are not Lank approved. So be sure to check that out. Hi, this is John Carpenter from Raven Visual Solutions. I uh, ran into an interesting scenario today with a smaller regional airport. My client called me to ask to take some before pictures of a construction project. So it was a last minute request. The location is actually in a zero AGL block. So I don't have blanket authorization for that block. Um, So I submitted an authorization request via the drone zone and then called the airport to talk to their UAS representative. And they told me that they were not an FAA tower, they were a contract tower and didn't have the authorization or wouldn't give me the authorization to fly on short notice and that I had to wait on the FAA's answer. I was wondering if you had run into this before or if anyone else had run into it and you could share experiences in this situation. I don't recall this being asked before on the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Appreciate the question. And uh, it's a really good one because I I don't know how many contracted towers are out there. I would imagine there's a bunch of them. There's a good amount of contracted towers that typically represent general aviation airports that are Mm. typically class Delta or doghouse airports, as we call them. Cool. All right. So... Is there a difference between a contracted and a So if there is someone in the tower operating the air traffic control tower uh, and that person is directing traffic in and out of the airport, then that person has the authority to also, you heard this right, grant an airspace authorization for you. Actually, we called our certified flight instructor, Mr. Ted Wilson, and uh, who's actually going to be redoing our Part 107 class. Really excited about that update. But that being said, I, wanted, I, I called him. I said, you know, Ted, I'm pretty sure contracted airport or public airport, air traffic control still has the ultimate authority at the airport. Is that correct? It, does it matter if they're contracted or not? And he's like, nope, it's the same person, same authority. And it just goes to show that there are some guys still in general aviation who are just deathly afraid of drones. And man, it's going to suck to be old and unwilling to change. That's all I got to (laughs) say. That's all you have to say? I I bet you have a lot more to say than that. But no, I mean, it makes sense because obviously they are a tower that can tell planes what to do and pilots what to do. So if they can do that, then they can tell drones what to do. I would sure think so. Who knows what is going on at that particular tower? It could be that he used that as an excuse to not have to give authorization. It's Or he could not know. Or he could have been told that. Who knows? I think it was probably one of those three scenarios. And I think you're 100% right. And it's just another way where you need to ask an open-ended calibrated question and because this pilot even went the extra step went through the drone zone to get the WAS authorization and then called the tower and did what typically most tower operators tell you to do that you have to go through the FAA portal I'm not allowed to do this yes you are and I'm really disgusted that you're lying to my face I've said that to multiple tower operators before I have no how did that go very well. Really? Yeah, because they're like, well, how do you know? And I'm like, well, under 14 USC uh, 119, it's, that's not actually the law. It's it's under a different part of the law. Anyway, my point is, is that... So don't use that. No, 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 don't use that. <laughs> um, I, I typically just have to showcase that I actually know what the hell I'm talking about. 
and that while their old experience may be useful in other aspects of life, unfortunately, today in this phone call, it won't be. So I just have to pull up also under 14 CFR 107. It says very specifically under airspace authorizations, who has the ultimate authority for that? And you just have to ask an open and calibrated question here, Rob, where you have to say, well, sir, you do have uh, you do have the authority to tell planes to fly in and out of the airport, correct? Yes. Then how do you expect me to believe you that you don't have the authority to control drone authorizations when they're one and the same? They're both aircraft, right? Yeah. Let the silence fly. Or, or you could even say, can an airplane land at this airport without you telling it it's okay? I want to bring the FAA on here because if you run into someone like this contract tower who's just trying to come up with bullshit excuses, who's openly lying in their position of authority, my next calibrated question would be, well, how is FAA and FISDO going to answer this question when they know that you're openly lying to pilots about the authorization control that you have? And I would just leave it there and just be like, well, I'm going to call FISDO and, uh, Beep. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't do that. Um, but again, but, we don't know that this guy was lying. He might just be, he might not know. True. Right? Very might be, true. He might be uneducated. Yes. Yes. Um, that's possible. a very good way to put it, Rob. Um, that being said, I'd love <laughs> to have the FAA come on here and say, what do you expect drone pilots to do when they want to fly in controlled airspace that is not LANC approved they put in a WAS authorization. The tower is outright lying to them about whether they have the authority to, to, you know, to do this or not. What do you expect a drone pilot to do? Because let's be real, anyone who doesn't have a 107 license is just going to go out there and fly it anyway. That's true. That's Seriously. True. Who are we kidding here? Like, come on. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, I had to say that to one air traffic controller. I was like, I was like, dude, okay, let's think this through for a second, right? I'm trying to go about this the right way. I'm trying to get permission the right way. You and I both know that rogue drone pilots are a real thing, right? Okay. They're flying right now. So how do you expect those people to fly properly when you don't provide a means of navigation to acquire airspace authorization in a reasonable amount of time? Well, it's, you know, oh, it's just, uh, I don't care. You have the authorization. If you are not in a position to make a decision, then, sir, you have the wrong job, and I'm going to ask for you to be fired. Hmm. But they would be in a position, so that wouldn't happen. Exactly. I'd still call Fizdo and bitch like I did last time. So do you think, this is looking ahead a little bit, Is re- how do you think remote ID is going to change this? Maybe that's a whole other podcast, but... That, well, that is a whole other podcast. If We should probably have Gen Z on here to talk about that. Probably, but in summary, do you think that that is going to even eliminate the need for getting this kind of authorization? I think it's just going to increase compliance. Of course. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I agree, but in but terms of it, practically speaking at the front end of flying, is it going to eliminate the need? Like in this particular case, if remote ID was intact then maybe he could fly. It just shows up on the ATC. I think remote ID is going to prove to all these old geriatric effers <laughs> that drones are really not that big of a safety problem. Well, I think, oh yeah, I mean, and then that's whole that's part of the whole thing with remote ID, and I really didn't intend to get into the 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 issues surrounding remote ID, but getting public the public competence in the system underlying drones I flying, I think the right? public has a lot of confidence in drones. If drones were seriously viewed as a scary thing, we would still be hearing stories all the time in the news about how drones are spying on people. And those stories kind of went away like three years ago. I don't think that's true. I mean, I think it's certainly gotten better, yeah. but it's the, the fear is not gone, and, and remote ID will help with that. But anyways, You're I was right. curious. The fear is not gone. People are still getting shot at in Florida and California. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So I was just curious if this would impact the authorization process at the front end of trying to get a job like this done. But because I don't know, I would imagine I that it would. But it would make sense to me that that would be the case. Well, I I would believe that it would make a more efficient process. Yeah. It would be more transparent. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think that on multiple things. levels that it would help. Yeah, I would. Think but so. I also think that it's going to have a more macro effect. Oh, I just, I, I can't get on the high horse here of the Luddites and the geriatrics, but they really are inhibiting the growth of this industry. And it's it, it just because, look, here's the thing, Rob. Here, I think this is what it really comes down to. 
there are 12 to 15 general aviation fatalities per day. Per day. I didn't know that. That's a lot of- Worldwide or US? US. Hmm. US only. Really? Yes. Now, AOPA has done a very good job at protecting everyone in general aviation. So that general aviation is not overly regulated. I think you remember the one time we talked about the history of compliance philosophy at the FAA. And a long time ago, the FAA used to come down really hard on people. Mm -hmm. And that's why compliance philosophy came out because people were complaining. AOPA was lobbying. AOPA has literally protected general aviation. We don't hear of 12 to 15 drone crashes per day that are causing fatalities, right? No. Nope. Um, I think the reason that these old Luddites are not allowing drones to fly in their controlled airspace is because they know the real problem with airspace safety mitigation is general aviation. And when you add another variable into general aviation, they think that innately it's going to cause more crashes. I'm sorry, but I don't think that... And this just goes back to, I, I would love to have like multiple air traffic controllers on the show. Say, how many times have you actually seen a drone from your tower? Because, well, you know, they do, Bill, they shut the place down. Bill and Kathy from the NTSB, they always ask the uh, air traffic controllers or tower operators when they're out there, could you see the drone when we were doing our mapping? No. Hmm. They haven't had a yes yet. And I said, as soon as you have a yes, you better come on the show and tell me about it. <laughs> I want to meet Superman and his biopic vision. If we could find an air traffic controller to come on the show, I think that would be a great idea to get I think their would, perspective. I agree. And I would give them the opportunity to provide that perspective without yeah. going all you know crazy on them. I think I agree. I think you would. <laughs> I, I would. would Everyone good, knows it, I want to fire off on them, but I'd, I'd give them well, a chance to talk. Yeah, and in in the end, it's 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 uh, it's what communication is about, right? You communicate, you have a conversation, you end up, you have more things in common than you thought. I believe we call that tactical empathy. Ta- exactly. Yeah, I think that's a great way to approach that conversation. But you can't also forget Done. to uh, nail in the knife and twist it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's okay. We'll be we'll be good. Um, frankly, I think it would be awesome to have an air traffic controller on here to answer our question asker. Um, the answer is whether they're contract or public, it's the same thing. You did the right thing by going through the drone zone first and then calling him. We didn't even say that to do that on the last show and you did it the right way. I would just call him back and say, how do you expect people to not just go fly willy nilly in your airspace when there's no, uh, convenient and reasonable way to get airspace approval and maybe even conference call FISDO in. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to do because FISDO is on recorded federal lines. So it's like. Well, I know you were worried about me recording, but FISDO was recording. So, yeah. <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Dronio. Ask Dronio.